welcome to Soul Symbols. My name is Shelly. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Happy Saturday. It is the weekly energy card reading. And what that is, is uh, you, the viewer, get to choose from one of three tarot or oracle decks, and then we will go through and do a quick spread to see what the general energies will be like for the next seven days. It does not need to be the uh, third week in March 2021 in order for the messages to resonate. If you come across this reading at any time, or if you're drawn to any of the piles, um, there may be um, a message contained for you. Now, there's a saying in card reading, we always say, take what resonates and leave the rest. And what that just means is that energies change, and um, so they change from minute to minute. So if, if you feel like something is not resonating or something just sounds like it is not jiving, then it may not be a message for you, or it could just be energy of the moment. You know how sometimes when you're frustrated, you know, energy kind of comes out in a certain spurt. Um, either that or it could just very well be a message for someone else. Um, I always think of card reading like dream interpretation. You know, we're just looking at the symbols and seeing what they mean. And those symbols can be very multi-faceted. You know, they can have several different meanings. So um, I definitely try to try to give the best um, um, expression to what I'm seeing. But if you feel like it is not your reading, then you do not need to take it. You just leave it at the wayside, right? Now, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. It, it has been a little bit of a long week. I was excited to, to do the read tonight, but a little little worn out. But um, I always get energized when I read your cards, though, so don't, don't worry about that. I always, this is what, this, uh, you know, being of service in this way and channeling the energy of the cards really does revive me as well. But um, we have three decks here, and um, I will be clarifying using a deck that we haven't used seen in a while. But the first deck is the Tarot of the Southwest Secret Tribes. And on top we have a beautiful red Jasper Eagle. And I love this guy because he, he can lay flat like this. And then um, he can also uh, go like this. Uh, so he can, uh, I'm hearing that, uh, that seal song, Fly Like an Eagle. <laughs> the second deck is the Sun and Moon Tarot by Vanessa DeCourt. And on top of it we have a beautiful obsidian um, or dragon glass. And then the third deck is the Tarot of the Divine by Yoshi Yoshitami. And on top of it, we have a beautiful raw crystal point. I think this is, it's like one end is raw and one is polished. Um, I always think that's such a gorgeous stone. Um, I actually got that stone as like a free gift and it just, it's so perfect. It has such good energy, a good cleansing energy too. And the deck I decided to go with, I've been really, this is this poor ne neglected deck. I haven't used it in so long. And, um, but it's called the Soul Coaching Cards. Um, and, and I think it is by Sonia Chiquet, who she's the author of another deck that I use that I really love. But um, these decks, this deck is really great. It gives, it gives like a one word and phrase, and then it, it, it always just brings such good positive energy uh, to a card reading. Um, so I, I went ahead and, oh, this is so cool. You know what? Um, I, I really resonate with, uh, with bluebirds. Uh, it's funny. I I kept seeing bluebirds or seeing the reference. That was a that was like a road sign that I kept seeing for a while, and I felt like it was my dad kind of talking to me. And it was interesting. One time I was sitting in my car and um, and on the radio, Miranda Lambert's Bluebird, the song Bluebird, came on. And um, I might link that in the description just because it was it was it was such a good song. It was like the the lyrics are real quirky. It's a very country song, so you, if you don't like country, that's fine. But it was just it was funny. It's like you know, um, you know, she keeps a you know when when life gives you challenges, you just keep a bluebird in your heart. You keep your happiness, right? But uh, that's a really it's a good song, and that just maybe that's playing into our energies today, this week. But all right, guys, so I will go ahead and um, do a freeze frame. Um, please choose from your intuition. If you need more time, please pause the video, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. I, I completely, and all, you know, my spiel has, is the same every single time. I forgot to mention, um, if you like any of the decks that you see, the name of the authors and of the deck, and 
The authors of the decks that I use are in the description box below. Sorry guys, I am a little worn out today. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Deck number one, the Tarot of the Southwest Sacred Tribes. What's your energy for the week? My fly, fly like an eagle, folks. Okay, this came out in the reverse, so we're going to take it. Okay, middle of the week. Okay, please clarify. We'll go with the top card. Um, judgment is trying to pop out, too. Hmm, I'm getting some interesting energy here. Hmm. Okay, end of the week, please. We got a lot of fours. We got a lot of stable energy. Four coins. Okay, interesting. All right, so we'll go ahead and get your oracle cards. What's our oracle card? Interesting, guys. Okay. Um, so we got some, some interesting energy. Um, now, the beginning of the week, you got the, the Ten of Wands, but you got it in the reverse. <clears throat> so definitely what I'm kind of feeling here, guys, is um, I get a strong sense that you you have a lot on your plate. Like you, there's a lot of um, both in life and, and, you know, in home and in relationships. You've got a lot going on right now, but you're purposely, this is actually a very good energy. Excuse me. Um, it looks like you're purposely, <clears throat> the Ten of Wands in reverse and the energy I'm getting is beginning of the week, um, you, I get the strong sense that you're you're putting down responsibilities that are not yours to, to, to carry, right? Because when you look at the Ten of Wands, he looks really burdened, overwhelmed, right? Like he's, he's, he's carrying this many wands and it looks like he's trying to pick up more and it's just too much. Um, so I really do get a sense, you know what I'm almost getting? Um, I'm getting a strong sense that if, if this is work related, I get a sense that you are refusing to take any more work on um, actually, I think you're probably giving a little bit of pushback. Um, you're, you're, you're saying, okay, no, I'm not taking on any more. Um, you're, you're saying like, you're, you're, you're setting boundaries a little bit here. The other thing I get with it being a 10, it's, it's a 10 is a culmination. It's the, the end of something. Um, I get the sense that you're, you're putting, you're, you're either delegating really well or you're just, you're just f finally, I, I get the sense, I really get the strong feeling like you're telling people no. Um, the other thing about this card is you do see kind of two envelopes in either corner. And so when I, when you look at it, there's a, there's an envelope in either edge. I really get the sense that you might be like, this might be through text messages or it could be through emails. Um, one other thing that's coming through here, guys, and I just got to say it, um, is that maybe um, maybe someone is really trying to burden you. Like not, you know how sometimes when, you know, um, you've got, a, you're, you're at work, you're, you're, you're busy, you're distracted, and then someone is like blowing up your inbox. They're trying to send you emails or text messages. Hey, I need you to do this. Hey, I need you to do that. I get the sense that you're either ignoring them, like you're flat out not responding because it's it's overwhelming and it's quite honestly, the person that's asking you to take on more knows that you can't take on more. So it's almost like you're just saying you're flat out either, you're either flat out saying no or you're just not replying and that's your answer. Your answer is no because you're not, you're not even looking at the text messages. Um, yeah, it, it is almost like, let me just kind of see. Please clarify the ten. 
Uh, three of Cups, yeah. Now, one thing this can kind of be is that it could, um, it could quite, quite possibly be that it, it might possibly be that you're talking to several people and it, it's just becoming that, that, that flood of, of inbox, um, stuff. It's just, it's a little too much to manage. You know how, um, you might be leaving people on unread because you just, you can't, you know, get to, you just can't get to them. Um, the other thing that I get is that I do sense like you are prioritizing what you want to prioritize. I think you are, you're, you are going to do the work that you set out to do and you're not going to take on any more, any more responsibilities. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that, um, I know this sounds like a weird energy, but quite honestly, it's, it's almost like you feel like some people are, um, have got it kind of easy like their workload is nothing and they're they're putting more on you even though you're swamped um but i do get i do kind of get the feeling like you'll you'll either be you'll either have messages go unread or maybe they you can the person can see that it's read but you're not replying to them um, and this is a, I think this is a good energy though. It's a good energy. You're, you're saying no to anything, uh, frivolous. Um, the other thing that I do kind of get is that, um, I do get the sense that you might just be really, really busy because, um, it's quite possible that you might be at work and, you know, having, you know how, uh, um, you might be busy doing other things, but then you are still having, um, social conversations and it's just making you, it's making it like nonstop. Like you're, you're just constantly, you know, going, you know, constantly typing, constantly communicating. And, um, and you might need to amp that down. Now, by the middle of the week, this is really quite inter interesting energy. We had a lot of cards. I kind of feel like, I feel like the middle of the week is going to be kind of eventful. Um, the middle of the week, you got the three of swords and I don't want you to freak out every single time we get the, the three of swords. We always clarify that. Um, but the cards just kept on coming right. And they kept falling right towards the middle of the week. But underneath the three of swords, we've got the ace of cups and then we've got the four of cups, the hermit, the two of coins and the eight of wands. What I'm really, I'm kind of getting, a, what my, my first feeling, my first sense that I got from this was that um, I did get a sense that if this is social, because a lot of cards about relationships kind of popped up. Like I saw the Queen of Cups, I saw the Six of Cups coming up around this Three of Cups energy. Um, if you are talking to more than one person, um, it is quite possible that by the middle of the week, um, one person is going to be a little bit more of the priority, while the other person is going to kind of go on unread. Because I'm kind of reading these two cards together, which is like the two of coins, which is like juggling, like juggling two valuable options. And then eight of wands is like rapid forward movement, right? It's like you're still going at that, you know, that going, going, going speed. And then the other two cards, you have the hermit and you have the four of cups. And both of those cards are really about pulling away, about going into yourself. And then you've got the Ace of Cups, which is really about an emotional new beginning. But then you have the Three of Swords. So I'll, I'll be honest, guys, there might be three people in the mix right now because we've got two threes here. Um... And what it is, is that one of the persons that you might, you might be talking to both of them, like it's a little bit of a juggle there, 
but one person, one person's getting a, is a little bit more of the green light, and the other person is going kind of on on you you're you're letting their messages go unread. You know they're they're in your inbox, but you're not replying right away, and it's almost like, again, with the four of cups, you have one cup being handed to you, but you're ignoring it, and I really get a strong sense that it's almost like. If this is kind of a relationship week, I do think that you might be talking to two people. One of the candidates, I'm sorry, is going to be a little bit more of your priority than the other one. But they are all three people are still in play cuz if you've if you watch the how to tarot on the 3 of swords, it's like all three people are still involved. It's just, you know, you're you're kind of full speed. You might be talking to the other person. The other thing is that these eight wands, you see how it has the same two emails, except the emails are on the right side of the card, which kind of mean the future. It's almost like you're um, in dating. They have this thing called future pacing. You know how if 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 you're talking to someone you really like, the moment that that person says something like, oh yeah, next month we'll do this, or next week we'll do this, that's future pacing, and that person is looking forward. They see you in their future, and the moment you see somebody in your future, they like you, right? Um, but the Four of Cups and the Hermit is really about withdrawn energy. It's really withdrawn energy. Now, one other way I can read this is that it's quite possible that the beginning of the week you have a lot of social stuff going on. Maybe maybe you could very well have like meetings that are a little bit more of the social kind of atmosphere, you know, where it's a little that you know you're you're doing work, but it's a little bit more of that casual, okay, it's more of the communicating in a um in a kind of community sense, like a, a little bit of a buddy buddy sense where you're getting around people. But um, one other thing I kind of get from this is that it just it takes a lot of it takes a lot of energy from you to participate in this. It's almost like, OK, going out and, um, you know, um, the other thing I think this this energy kind of feels like is that with world events, everybody's been inside for so long now that things are starting to feel a little bit better, you know, knock on wood, you know, people there, there are, you know, small gatherings of things and we are starting to, you know, dress work appropriate again. Maybe that is, um, maybe that is just gonna, it feels a little bit burdensome to you. It's almost like you just have to exude. I, I get the sense like you almost feel like you have to exude that much more energy, you know, to kind of be on. You know what I mean? You know, to, it, it, we're not used to getting up earlier to dress, you know, um, and go to work and, and do the thing. So what I'm kind of getting is by the middle of the week, what what could be happening is that you might you might really want to make a decision. But it's almost like. It's almost like you 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 know you're juggling and you want you want to make a decision or you have you have like kind of the green light to make a decision but you don't feel quite ready yet like you're you know you you've got this opportunity being handed to you but you still rather pull within so by the middle of the week I get the sense like you know what I'm almost getting? I get the sense like you have the opportunity for the Ace of Cups, like you have an opportunity to make a big decision. The green light is there. Like you can stop juggling. You can put one of those coins down and just go full speed ahead towards the one cup. The one cup is being handed to you, but it's almost like you're pretending like it's not there. Uh, because you want to you want to withdraw. It's you're, you're acting by the middle of the week. You don't want to take action yet. You don't want to take action yet. It's almost like you feel like you're not ready to. But I do kind of get the sense like it's kind of, it's keeping you separated from someone. Um, either that, I, I am getting kind of a limbo status here. I really do think that it involves people, though. I think it involves people because... 
three of coins. We got another three. Um, ten of coins. Yeah, um, I, I get the sense as if there might there might be something in the middle of the week that's really like encouraging you to make a choice to make a decision to kind of I mean I mean the ace of cups could very well be your own cup like you might be trying to you might be real encouraged you, it's almost like you you want to stop juggling you want to you want to go towards one choice but you're hesitant it's almost like you want to pull within and make you want to think about it a little bit more um, but the opportunity, I get this sense like you have this great opportunity because the ace is a new start. It's something new, right? But you're, you're refusing to take that ace. You'd rather stay in, um, the other thing I kind of get is I do get the feeling like it's some kind of either separation or it's, it's by not making it a choice, by taking more time to decide what you want to do. You're going to continue to juggle the situation, even though it's over, you know, it's, it takes a lot of energy. Um, and I, I do get the sense that it's, it's, it's going to keep three people in place. Um, but you're very clearly being an offered. The other thing about the four of cups and the ace of cups is both of those cups are being, um, are, are, are cups. If you look at the traditional Rider Waite Smith, um, it's there, it's a, it's the hand of God handing the cup. So it's almost like a gift from the universe, right? But the, in the four of cups, the person is ignoring that the cup's being given to them. And the hermit is the person who's walking up to the mountaintop. But I am seeing one thing with this week is that we are transitioning from the Three of Cups to the Four of Cups. So, um, but what, what I kind of see there is that um, this is a third party situation. This is a third party situation. And by, by staying with all, th by keeping, by not making a decision and keeping all three people, by not making a decision or not making a choice, all three people are stuck together in this in this situation and it doesn't necessarily have to be love um i saw a lot of cards that represent family so it could be some kind of family choice but i think right now you just feel like you want more time but some something about the middle of the week it's almost like you're going to want more time but the universe is like telling you this is now the choice is now your opportunity is now and you're, but you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, I, I, I do see that you're gonna hold out. <laughs> you're gonna hold out. You're gonna try to hold out. The, you're gonna try to pretend like that opportunity. You're gonna, you're gonna treat it like you have more time. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And actually, when we get to your oracle cards, that kind of, it makes sense. You know, if, if, if you're in a situation that you have to handle delicately, you know, um, I can kind of see that you don't want to do anything impulsive. The other thing I get is that I think it involves money. I think it involves money and or security. Now, by the end of the week, you got another four. So again, you're seeing like a lot of threes go into a four. And uh, by the end of the week, you got the four of pentacles. And the four of pentacles, again, is that real... I, I get the sense like you're digging in. Um, by the end of the week, you're digging in. You're... you're you you want to you want to hold on <laughs> you want to and I get the sense that you want to hold on to your you want you want things to stay the same right now and I get the sense it's because you're afraid of change you're afraid of change the other thing I get is that with the hermit card I'm getting a strong sense that maybe I get a strong sense that maybe you you haven't you when when some, when a when a when a hand pops out of a cloud handing you a cup, you're not real quick to trust it is what I'm kind of getting. It's almost like with the hermit energy, it's almost, I almost feel like you're reflecting on the past. Um, that's another, that's another thing these two cards have in common. The four of cups have that in common too. It's almost like, okay, I've, I've gone with the, 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 the cup in the sky three times before, and here it comes again. Here's another cup from the sky. How do I know that this is going to work out, right? You know, once I'm getting a kind of a once bitten, twice shy kind of energy. 
but I do get the sense that that again I feel like the opportunity is now and by you holding out it's kind of keeping it's keeping three people in a bad situation but it's it's that's not to pressure you to make any decisions you go with your gut whatever your gut tells you to do you know but by the end of the week I do get the sense that the jury's still not out um and I get the sense that I think you're kind of, you want to hold on to your security. I really get the sense that you do not want to lose. W one way that I can read this, guys, because the Four of Pentacles, even though it's Pentacles, and that usually means money or possessions, um, the, the other thing about possessions is sometimes that can be holding on to people. So it could be one of those things where it's very clear in your mind who you want to go with. But you don't want to let go of, of the, the other person or the other because they that, that thing has value to you, right? Um, the other thing is that it, it might be about stability. Um, sometimes situations like this could be that maybe you're in a situation that really bogs you down. It makes you feel really burdened and you have an opportunity to go for something different, but you're afraid to leave that because it's it's either different, you know, it would... You, it would be a risk and I do kind of get a sense that you either are afraid of losing property or losing money um, here I'm just going to ask real quick what are they afraid of losing what's this for please clarify the four points ah two of cups knight of swords um I, I think, yeah, I'm getting a strong sense this is relationship related, guys. And I think these are the these are the main themes of your week, but I do think they're connected. Um you're 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 afraid of having to tell someone that you have feelings for someone else. The world, yeah. That's that's completing a cycle. You're you're resisting completing a cycle. You know? And that's another four. Those are the fixed elements. Fours, fours get things done, right? They're the, the, the cornerstones of something. But one thing I do see is that by the end of the week, I see two people. Um, but let's go ahead. Your, your oracle cards are really, really good, guys. You've got, you got the leave. And it says the best is yet to come. And then you've got power, which says, I am a radiant, glorious, powerful being. See, guys, I, I, I do think that, I think that you're feeling weak. You know how, because what, what I'm really noticing is you see how the other flowers haven't completely bloomed yet. But this one is, this one is, 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 is getting, it almost looks like it's getting powered by the sun. And look at this. This has a sun in it too, guys. I mean, all these cards do, but look at that. It's like. Um, there's there's a circle in the world too. I do think that maybe you might be holding on to some kind of security, and I I do get the sense that there's someone there's someone that you really want to talk to. There's someone that you really want to talk to. Um, but it's almost like you're you're afraid. The other thing I kind of get is that I get the sense, yeah, Queen of Cups. We just had a tarot on the Queen of Cups. This is someone who makes you feel very emotionally happy. Three, and three of coins again. Yeah. Someone that you cooperate with well. Could be someone that you talk to at work. But... What I'm really getting is that you either don't you either don't want to let go of a situation because you know going towards this choice would take you away from something that makes you feel secure. But what it's telling you is that you do have power, right? You're in, you're not powerless in this situation. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that both of these both of these cards are about reaching for something greater, right? Reaching for the stars, right? So. Yeah, I, I think you're afraid to take a risk. <laughs> but um, the other thing I get with the Three of Swords is it's quite possible that that by not taking a risk, you're you're causing yourself pain, right? You're 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 leaving yourself. Um, you're either keeping yourself separated from the person that you want to be with, um, or 
or you're you're keeping yourself in fear of loss but by the end of the week this is really beautiful energy i do think that the jury's not out yet i think you are still going to be kind of um, uh, you know, you're going to stay grounded, but I would just say that if there's what, it, what it's really asking you to do is probably let go. And, um, you, you have power, you have power, right? You know, any choice that you make, it will be the right choice. And, um, um, you know, my, my mom always says, she always says, you know, um, sometimes uncomfortable situations are just a wormhole to something better. It feels real tight. It feels real uncomfortable. You feel really uncertain, but you know there, there. That's what it says. It says the best is yet to come, right? The best is yet to come. You, you're not going to be in this. Um, in you, you have the power, right? You have the power. You can do what you choose to do, and whatever you choose to do is going to give you good results. But all right, guys. So that was your week. Oh my gosh, that was really powerful. All right, deck number two, the sun and moon tarot. Deck number two, let's see. What's your energy for the week? Deck number two, beginning of the week. Yeah, okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, middle of the week. Please clarify. Okay, end of the week. Energy here, guys. Uh, the star was trying to pop out, so that's like the best. Okay, and let's switch your card for the week. Quite a few majors here, guys, because we do. We have the chariot. Okay, I'm kind of getting a bead here. I didn't realize we kind of have like um, the spread is turning out differently. I'm, 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 I'm. I pick cards intuitively, like I kind of just know in my gut. Okay, yes, these go together. Um, and in here with, with Pat, you know, middle of the week, end of the week, um, we've got kind of like two cards and then, um, I always look at it this way. I always think root stem and bloom. So the outward energy is the top card, how what's behind that energy is the stem and the root of all of this is this. So what I am definitely seeing Um, this is interesting. Um, in the beginning of the week, I think you're going to be cooperating with someone. And what's so interesting about this, guys, is that, okay, so you got the chariot. And the chariot is really about moving forward, um, but it's, it's about channeling the, 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 wi the will of opposing forces to go in the same direction. And he does, he even has like a, a little cancer. This is the first time I'm noticing that. He has a little cancer crab on his shirt. And the chariot is a cancer card. Um, so you, you might be really pulled by the moon or the, the moon signs this week or by the beginning of the week. Uh, let me just think here. Um, today the moon is in Taurus and then over the weekend's Gemini. Check it out, guys. Over the weekend, starting Sunday, Monday, um, the, the, the moon is going to be in cancer. Um, so I think quite honestly, there's a lot of moon energy here too, because the middle of the week we got, uh, like what looks like a full moon. But, um, 
um, what I'm really getting is that um, you're really going to be you're going to be moving ahead like you're going to be making strides forward but it's it's um, it's almost like with with the dark and the light horse and here it's it's oxen right um, with the dark and the light horse what I always think about with the chariot is that um, the chariot is about channeling opposing forces to move forward like it is it is about willpower it's almost about like getting the two sides of you to cooperate I always think of it like this um you you know when you when you start up an engine of a car um it takes friction to start up the engine right it takes friction to get the the the, the engine to turn over and when you look at someone's astrological chart that's what squares are Squares are friction, right? They're 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 opposite signs. Like for instance, if you look at um, if you look at a um um like a Scorpio and an Aquarius, you know those two square off. You know they 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 go they go they they they're both get it done signs, but they both come at the they come at the task from different directions. And, you know, they, that neither of them will do, you know, the way that the Scorpio gets it done is not the same way that the Aquarian gets it done. But if you're able to, if you're able to harness what, what those two signs have in common to get them to go in one direction, right? Um, that's, that's like, like the friction that makes an engine go, right? It's, and that's what I kind of feel in the beginning of the week. Um, you might be feeling um what i really get is i feel like in the beginning of the week it's going to be you and another person now here we have the queen of swords and we have the king of wands so you have a king and a queen here now this could potentially be a boyfriend a girlfriend or a spouse um, assign you can assign the genders as they resonate. You can be a man in the Queen of Swords energy, or you can be a woman in the King of Wands energy. But what I'm really sensing is, I get the sense that the outward energy is the chariot. You are moving forward by channeling two opposing forces, and I just uh, I see a synchronicity here. I'm going to see if I can hold these up like this. If you look at it, the bowl here looks white. And look at how much white is near the, the Queen of Swords. The bull here looks dark, and look, the King of Wands is riding a dark horse. I get the sense that you're going to be, you, you are going to be cooperating with another person, and it's almost like the, your two energies, yours and theirs, are going to propel both of you forward in the beginning of the week. So this could be co-op, again, this could be a cooperation with um, somebody at work. It could be a cooperation, um, this could be cooperation with a brother or sister. But I get the sense, the other thing that I kind of get is that one person is really kind of gung-ho, like they're really, again, they're riding in, you know, you know, you know, tail feathers on fire. And the other person is taking a little bit more of an analytical approach. Um, and she's also, she's also, you see how she holds a mask in her hand. She's not allowing anybody to come at her false. So what I really kind of see with that is it's like, okay, if, you know, if, if you do not, you know, you know what I'm hearing? I'm hearing that song, Don't Tell Me No Lies and Keep Your Hands to Yourself. <laughs> Don't tell me no lies and keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I don't know where that's coming from. I'm kind of feeling like um, you might you might be dealing with someone who's like kind of coming in hot and you're kind of like, okay, um, I'll, I'll go places with you, but don't, you know, don't tell me no lies and keep your, you know, don't, uh, it's, it's almost like you're getting things done because you're respecting each other's rules. <laughs> and the Queen of Swords definitely has a lot of rules. But if you look at her, she's, she's, she doesn't have closed body language. She's got open body language, but she, she sure as hell will unmask you if you try to lie. But the other thing is that the, the King of Wands is really, you know, is enthusiastic. And these two energies are compatible. 
air and fire is compatible. The other thing I kind of get is that um, with this in between card is the Six of Pentacles, um, which is normally about equal give and take. It's about if one person is doing more than they, they give to the other. Um, but in this card, it's really kind of neat. You kind of see pennies from heaven kind of falling, falling into her dress there. So, and it even says, it says success. So, you know what I'm really getting? I feel like in the beginning of the week, you're cooperating with someone. I do think you and this person are opposite energies. But it's it's almost like you're respecting each other's rules. Like the way that you, again, you know, the, the you, you one person might be a little impulsive. And you're willing to overlook the impulsiveness as long as they don't do anything, you know, as long as they don't do anything smarmy. <laughs> and um, the other thing is I, I'm getting a lot of... I'm getting a lot of honesty here um, because the Queen of Swords is, is, is honest to a fault. She will not tell you no lies. Um, and the King of Wands, he, he's almost, um, most King of Wands are fire signs and they're, they're almost bluntly honest. Uh, the, what I almost get is they almost, you know, what they think will kind of come out their mouth and they'll be like, oops, did I say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Okay. You know, um, but it's it's almost like that that blunt energy that that un, unharnessed um, uh, drive is really going to get things done. Um, the other thing I kind of get with the six of swords is it's almost like um, if one person has is, a, is stronger in one area, then they'll pick up the slack in that area. Um, but if another person is good at something else, they'll pick up the slack. Like if this is husband and wife, like if you say, okay, honey, I, I don't like mowing the lawn, but I don't mind unloading the dishwasher. It's kind of like you'll, you'll do more of what you do. And, and again, it, it propels both of you forward. And, um, and like here, the other thing I get is that it, it almost makes both of you successful. Um, I am getting kind of getting a teamwork kind of vibe. And that's, that's going to be the beginning of the week. There's a big teamwork vibe going on. And it's going to benefit you both. But I, I am, you know, it's interesting. I'm picking up on that energy. I am, I am getting that energy like, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll let you yoke. Because you are, you're yoking each other's strength. You're yoking each other's strength. You're willing, even though you're of, of opposite opinions about things you have opposite ways of doing things you're willing to go in the same direction to benefit both of you but i do kind of get the sense like if there's something about that sword and something about with him with that that you know that pitchfork there that that uh that rod on fire i do kind of get the sense like you know how each other is like i and and Again, you're playing by each other's rules. You're not you're you're adhering to each other's rules and you're going the same direction and it's mutually symbiotic relationship. That's what I'm getting. It's you're both you're going the same direction and it's benefiting you both because again, it's almost like the 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 areas where you overlap and your strengths are combined, that's what you're leaning on. But you definitely, I get with these two people, you definitely have ways that you are completely opposite. Um, now, but you're, you're, you're willing to work around that. And it's very, very productive. Beginning of the week is very, very productive. Now, the middle of the week, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Is that middle of the week, we've got the Eight of Cups. And this is your energy. This is your this is your weekly energy. So, what I kind of get is um, what uh, what I am sensing here is that um, you might be kind of dealing with someone that you don't trust very well. Um, in the middle of the week, I do yeah. kind of get the sense like you might be kind of walking away from something. Um, the The root of the energy is we got the devil and we got the seven of wands. So what I'm kind of getting here is that you kind of feel like something's going to make you feel like you're fighting a losing fight. Like that, that something's just futile. 
Um, the other thing I kind of get is that um, I get I get the sense like some kind of situation is going to make you feel really defensive by the middle of the week. Um, and it's going to make you feel a little bit like, you know what I'm honestly getting, guys? I'm getting a little bit of a martyred energy here. I'm getting a martyred energy. Um... Now, one thing that this could be is that this could this could be work related. Um, you just in the middle of the week, you might just feel really overwhelmed. You know, um, one thing I'm kind of noticing with this devil card is the way that they're they're kind of trapped together in the spider web, and the the devil's just kind of looking over them at them. Now, the other thing is interesting is that in this card. Um, the, the devil holds a staff, the staff of Mercury, which is like this, the uh, staff of communication. And, um, oh, you know, this is the first time I've ever noticed that. The end of the Mercury staff is kind of piercing a heart. And the people look like they're trapped in a spider web. Now, I can kind of read this one of two ways. If this is kind of a carryover energy from the beginning of the week, um, it's quite possible that you and your, you and your spouse or, you or your partner are really cooperating well. I do think that you're opposite energies. But then by the middle of the week, they're, I'm just really drawn to the way that it seems like one person is kind of fighting all of the staffs. And, and the other person looks like they're just kind of walking away. Um, I do kind of get the sense, like, maybe by the middle of the week, you felt like, okay, you beginning of the week, you really felt like you were cooperating with someone and things were going well. But then in the middle of the week, it's almost like the other person... I don't think this other person's, like, offering you up but I think by the middle of the week, it's almost like you're fighting the battle on your, by yourself. Um, you, you feel like, you know, you feel, you feel like you're fighting the battle by yourself. And, you know, almost like it's a losing battle. Um, but what I am kind of seeing here is I do kind of see that there's some kind of situation about winners and losers here. Um, one other way that I kind of see it is if this is separate energy, um, in the middle of the week, you could really, you could have really gone up, like you might have been trying to fight a battle against something that felt like a, a really insurmountable force. And I know that sounds weighty for a weekly energy, but sometimes you can feel that way. Believe me, I've definitely, I've felt that way at work sometimes. Sometimes I just go in thinking, okay, I'm going to knock this out. I'm going to get this done. And then it totally kicks my ass. Um, the other thing that it can be is that um, the, the one thing that I kind of read this as is that it's quite possible that you might have gone, you might have um, kind of tackled some kind of task as a, as a joint unit, and then it was kind of like divide and conquer, right? Um, maybe somehow, um, somehow, you know, this is a weird interpretation, but this is really what I'm feeling. It's, it's, it's almost like you and somebody else were, were, were really making a good team. Like you, it was working. And then by the middle of the week, um, the, the, the team got split up or somebody gets kind of lured away. Um, I, I am almost getting kind of, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I got to say it. Um, it, it's almost as if one person, you know, like if, if it's the two of you working together and then someone's boss comes along and says, no, you, you shouldn't be helping her. Don't help her. And then they, they, they follow the, you know, they, they, they don't have any choice, right? They have to do what their, the person tells them to do. And what, what it feels like is it, it, you feel like this person left you to fight the battle by yourself and then you, somebody ends up feeling defeated, right and then you know what i am i'm i'm getting a little bit like feeling like um 
I do get the sense that by the middle of the week, you're going to be going, you're going to be fighting kind of a tough battle, guys. And what I'm sensing here is that these two cards here, because it talks about defeat and indolence, and, you know, um, you see the guy, the guy is the one on the ground. He's the defeated one, and then you see him walking away. The other thing is you see a full moon, which really talks about following your instincts. Now, I don't want you to be discouraged. This is actually good energy for, for being the toughy cards, but because the, the one thing about the Five of Swords, and, and if, if you get to the middle of the week and you really feel like this energy is, is if, if this is resonating and you really feel like, oh my gosh, this is my week, I would highly encourage watching the Five of, five of Swords How to Tarot. I have it here on my playlist, the How to Tarot for the Five of Swords. Because one of the things about the Five of Swords is it's about walking away from the feudal fight. It's about, it's, it's about, you know, um, somebody, if somebody's going to crow like they won, I always say the five of swords is like the playing, the five of swords is like playing chess with a seagull. The, the bird is just going to crap on the board and strut around like he won anyway. So sometimes it's better to walk away. So you might be faced with a situation. I don't get the sense that it's this person that you were partnering with. I'm getting a strong sense that this person was helping you and then something pulled this person away and they had no choice about it. They probably would have wanted to stay and fight the fight with you, but they were told they shouldn't. Like, don't defend this person, don't work with them. And they, again, it's like that, that control. They're, they, you know, stay away from this person. And then it left you to fight the, the overwhelming because the Seven of Wands is like David and Goliath. And then you're, you weren't able to fight the battle on your own. So instead of, instead of playing chess with the seagull, instead of just, you know, instead of fighting a losing battle, you just walk away. So this could be a home situation. Now, one thing I do kind of see with this is that if this, if this is involving family members, you know, um, one way that this kind of could manifest is maybe, you know, maybe you and your spouse are on the same page about something and then all of a sudden their mother or someone in an influence comes along and says, no, you got to do things my way. And then they have no choice. Right. Um, and it, it it makes you it makes you want to give up. You know, um, I do get the sense. But the thing is that this card, it says valor. You know, valor is about being courageous. It's about doing the brave thing. So I think in the middle of the week you are fighting the good fight, but I think something about this, um, yeah, I, I get the sense by the middle of the week that you, you might have to admit defeat about something, but you know what? It's really not so much defeat as it is you just, doing doing the thing that needs to be done the other thing about the knight of the the other knight of cups i'm sorry i don't know where that came from um that might mean something um the other thing about you know with the five of swords being the person on the ground and then the same person walking away and the eight the, the thing about the eight of cups is that it doesn't mean that you're walking away forever but it means that you there's these cups are carefully stacked there's nothing else you're you're not going to sit around the other thing i kind of get is that you're not going to just sit around and let somebody pin you to the floor with swords that's what I'm really getting. You're not going to let anybody pin you to the floor with swords. You're going to pull the swords out and be like, bye. You know? Um, the other thing that I get is that um, if you stay around, um, it is kind of fighting a losing battle. And the, 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 other, the other side of the team is the, the, the person that you're fighting is just going to, they're just going to crow like they want anyway. They really will. So it might be better for you to walk away. Um... I'm trying to think, do we have a full moon coming up? I am getting a lot of lunar energy. One other thing that I'm just going to caution about is by the middle of the week, the moon would be in Leo. And um, that's not a bad thing. I, I have plenty, uh, uh, all of the women in my life have le strong Leo planets and they're the warmest, most generous, most creative people that I know. But sometimes the moon gets in kind of a wonky energy. There's a little bit of a wobble to it when it's in a fire sign. 
and it does it does make people a little bit cocky. And the other thing that I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of dry land, right? I'm seeing a lot of dry land. So I do think that this 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 energy is going to be occurring when the moon's in Leo. But let's go ahead and move towards the end of your week. And wow, guys, this is really amazing. This is cool, guys. This is really, really cool. Now, by the end of the week, the root of your energy is you got two majors. And that that's amazing. You got two majors. You got the hanged man. And you got the moon. Now, the hanged man... You see him, he's in a meditative state, even though he's hung upside down. And you see more of that dry land, except you see a tree that's growing. It's almost like it's growing again. And then you've got the moon. Now, I do think that, I think that you are going to be up in your feels. The other thing I kind of get is that whatever this situation is, it did, it, it did not make you feel good. I think it, it made you feel like a loser. Um, even though you were, you were being so freaking brave. That's the other thing. Moon and Leo, you were being brave as all get out. You were, you were willing to go up against, this is David and Goliath. You were willing, you were willing to be David against Goliath, Goliath. And that's really a scary thing, but you admitted defeat when you had to. But I also get the sense that, um, I do get the feeling. One thing I am getting with this is it's, it's almost like no one came to your aid. I think that's what frustrates you. And that's that's what's heartbreaking about this walking away. Is it's almost like and then by the end of the week it's like you're reflecting back on it and and um believe me, I know how you feel. Like any time you look back at a situation and you just kind of you kind of go in circles with it. You're like, "Okay, should I have even tried to fight it? Should I have just given in? Did I do the right thing? Um, you know, was I being, you know, was I being haughty?" Um, I really get the sense that you're the defeated one, though, guys, because by, because what I'm kind of seeing is above it, you've got the nine of wands and you've got strength. And look at what a, a transition this is, guys. You, you were, you were brave enough. Seven, eight, nine. Seven of wands. David and Goliath. You, you fought the good fight. You couldn't win. You walked away. And then by the end of the week, you're, you're still standing. You know, you're still standing. Um, now, you are battle-worn. You're battle-worn. And I think you are, I think you really are reflecting on it. But what, what's great about the Hanged Man is he's a card of inaction. He does not take action. Um, I think that you... One other thing that I'm getting here, and I'll be quite honest, I get the sense that if this is like a work situation or if this is a love situation, I really get, I'm getting more of a work vibe. If, if you're feeling, if you're being made to feel defeated and like you have to go to battle, like you have to stand up for what's right or you have to walk away, this is making you, this is really making you wonder if this is even worth it. And the cool thing about the hanged man is this is a very mature energy. He does not do things impulsively. Um, one other thing I do kind of get from this is that I do think that you're feeling kind of emotional about this because this will get you up in your feels. Oh, heck to the yeah, it will. You know? Someone pinning you to the ground and going, ha huh, ha. Huh. You know, I always think of that kid from, you know, um, from The Simpsons. That's someone making you feel like that to the point where you, you know... You're looking at them like they're they're the seagull crapping on the game board. You know, like, why do I even want to talk to you? Um, it, but I think what you're doing is you're feeling, you're feeling all of those emotions. You're feeling humiliated. You're feeling defeated. You're feeling, you know, like you're, you're questioning yourself. Was I stupid to even try to fight that fight? You know? Um, but you're trying to sort your emotions before you take any action. And I do think that, I do think that you're seeing the higher value of this situation. And I promise you, anytime you have, anytime you have the heart to walk away from someone being like this, you are the better person. I'm just going to come out and say it. I, I'm, I, I don't like, I don't believe in sides, 
but you know one other thing I can kind of see with this is sometimes people get in five of swords energy, you know, where they want to defeat you, like they want to push your face into the ground when they are intimidated by you. When someone is intimidated by you, they will act like that. And I think I think that's what you're kind of sorting out because your feelings were hurt, you 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 were the defeated one. But you're kind of trying to see it from a different angle. You're trying to not make any decisions. And if this is work related, you could kind of be like, why do I work here? <laughs> you know, why do I put up with this? Um, but before you do anything crazy, you're kind of sorting out, okay, you know, that made me feel bad. You know, may, why did this person do this? Why did I lose? The other thing is that sometimes you weren't you weren't meant to win. You know how you have those situations? Like maybe maybe you are on the losing side of the battle, but you know, so you kind of have to you kind of have to go over what happened and and incorporate that. But what I also see is that you've got a lot of strength. And you know what I am hearing? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing fall down seven times, get down, you know, get knocked down seven times, get up eight is what I'm hearing. Or get knocked down eight times, get up nine. You know, you, you're coming back stronger. You know, um, you know what I'm thinking of when I see this? Have you ever seen um, the, the, the movie um, Captain America, the first one? And you know how before he be you know before he becomes the superhero he's that really skinny kid from Brooklyn and he's getting his butt beat in the you know back alley and he's all bloodied and he gets back up again and the dude's like have you had enough he's like I could do this all day and he's you know he's swaying on his feet but I could do this all day I I do think that you believe in the cause that you're fighting for and you will you'll get back up and be like I can do this all day come at me but I I do think that you're trying to sort the other thing I see is that the 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 end of your week you got the Prince of Pentacles which is the Knight of Pentacles I think that you're gonna keep on trucking but what you're gonna do is you're gonna be you're gonna pick your battles the other thing that I'm really getting from this energy is that every single one of these failures is teaching you how to be successful. Like you, you go up against it, you get knocked down, you, you reflect on it, you reflect on it, and then you're going to come back, you're going to learn how to come back stronger. Now, one other thing I am kind of seeing here, guys... Um, I will just come out and say this. Um, right now, Saturn has gone into the sign of Aquarius. If you have any any fixed signs in your chart, like it's strong in your natal, your your native uh, natal chart, like at the time you were born. So if you have any Leo, um, any Leo planets, any Taurus planets, or any Scorpio planets that are anywhere from eight degrees up to 12 degrees, you're feeling Saturn right now. And one thing that, that happens when Saturn starts making transits, oh gosh, guys, oh my God. Okay, sorry, that just rang a bell. Um, the If you have Pluto and Scorpio, if you were born any time between 80 five and I'll have to look it up I think 88 you're going through a Saturn Pluto square right now holy crap I didn't even think about that Saturn Pluto square whoa what a whammy uh, both of them are outer planets and one biggie big 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 deal here is that um, Saturn is going to be really Pluto is your your planet of transformation and um, and Saturn is the taskmaster planet the Saturn is going to, it's going to put a vice on your money. It's going to put a vice on your security. And what it wants you to do is, and, and believe me, I've been through this transit. I know how you feel. Um, uh, several years ago, um, and it was, it was some really tough years for me. Um, when Saturn was going through Aries, it was an opposite to my Pluto. And it was a square to everything else. 
it was a, it was a transit. It it did put me through the ringer, but um, Saturn wants you to break down any bad habits. Um, it also wants it it also wants you to prioritize what what is valuable in your life and what is not, and it will keep coming at you like this. Now I know this that's a, that's. You know, it's going to be, those two planets are going to be squaring each other for a while, probably about two and a half years. Don't, don't freak out. It's okay. What I always like to say is that even though the outer planets are making a, like a long transit square, lean on, lean on the shorter transits, like where the sun is, where the moon is, where Mercury, Venus, uh, look at the Jupiter uh, Jupiter right now is in Taurus. Oh God, that's not helping you either. Um, but look at when Venus gets into a plate, a placement that can support your Scorpio, support your fixed signs, lean on the good planets as they're coming in and going out, because you're really going to need that. It's going to give you those little bursts of sunshine when you need it. But, um, what I kind of see here is that this, uh, your week is kind of, um, kind of like a, a smaller ripple of that bigger transit where you are going to be tested. You are going to be tested. It is a fall down eight times, get up nine kind of energy. Um, the other thing you get is that you're, you're really going to feel like you're fighting. You're going to be, feel like you're fighting the, the hard fight. Um, you might, you might, um, uh, and all I can say is that if you are having one of those weeks where you feel really trapped by something, make a plan. Make a plan and just, and trust me, your Saturn will, will do this. Um, the other thing is look at your own natal chart and see where Aquarius falls on your chart. Like, um, I'm sorry, what house Aquarius falls in. Like, for instance, um, in my chart, Aquarius is on the fourth house. That means home and family. So me with Saturn going through that, I'm really, you know, paying attention to my family, my living situation. Um, if it falls in like your first house, that can be a sign of you completely changing. That's that can be a sign of you completely changing your sense of self, your identity, who you are. Um, but what I get is that, um, again, each one of those defeats, whether this is a, a situation or something, um, you will come back stronger. I do think by the end of the week, you're going to be in a good energy. You are going to feel, you're going to be, again, you know, you probably have a bloody nose and you'll be like, I can do this all day, right? But the, the, the Knight of Pentacles is a slow moving but he he's slow and steady slow and steady win the battles that you can win if if it's important to you fight the big battle fight the big battle if it means something to you don't you know um if you feel like you're being defeated if you feel like someone's not being fair someone's being a tyrant walk away but um fight the battles that you can win also, if, you know, like if this is like a money situation or if this is like a living situation, um, you know, reserve your strength, you know, hang in there. And, and again, just make a plan, make a plan. The Prince of Pentacles is really about, he, he always gets where he's going. And look, guys, it's another bull. Look at that. It, it really is kind of telling me that you might have to get there on your own. Um you might have to get there on your own. The other thing that I get is that you could be dealing with someone who has a little bit of a sharp mouth. You know, you could be dealing with someone who's real, real verbally kind of stabbing. But by the, by the end of the week, I do feel, I do feel like you're going to feel a little lost, but you will, I think that you'll be able to see the person, you'll be able to see this situation from a different perspective. You will have to kind of hang tough, hang in there. Um, but I do think that by the end of the week, I think you're going to be learning how to be go alone. Because the other thing is you see how he's holding a globe. You know, you got you got the world in your hands. You can have the world, anything that you want. And the world in tarot means completion. It means the end of a cycle, right? So your two oracle cards are really great, guys. You got joy 
And so it says, joy and ec ec ecstasy flow through me wildly and freely. And then you got enthusiasm. I celebrate everything in my life. I live in limitless joy. Um, I get the sense, and I think these are encouragement cards, clearly. Um, I think that you you are going to feel like you're you're going to feel like you're walking through molasses. I do. I think right now you're going to be feeling a little bit like it's two two steps forward, three steps back. But I think the universe is trying to remind you that you do have joy in your in your heart. You know, keep keep your heart open. The other thing is try to keep your heart open to things that can bring you little bursts of joy. Like I almost get this as kind of like a smile of the day kind of thing. Try to look for what's good in your life. Um, also appreciate, if you appreciate the things that you have, even when everything else is kind of tough. Again, if you have a tough day at work and you come home and you see you see your child and um, and they're just so happy to hit, see you, they give you the running hug, you know, that's... And embrace that happiness, you know, hold on to that happiness. The other thing is that with enthusiasm, you know, I celebrate everything in my life. Celebrate your victories. Um, I know you've got a lot going on right now, but especially by the end of the week, um, I think you do see the higher purpose of this. I think you're a very spiritually in tune person, um, but you are going to feel a little beat down. Um, you're going to feel, you're just going to feel like you're moving again. You're going to feel like you're moving in slow motion, but you are moving. You are moving. The, the, the Knight of Pentacles is still a knight. He still goes. He's just the slowest moving knight. But the other thing that's nice is that you're laying a foundation. You are putting down foundations for what you need. Um, I will go ahead and uh, I'm really seeing this as a bluebird. Um, and I mentioned in the intro, there's it's it's a very country song, but it's a very it's it's a top forty song. It's not it's not too twangy, but um if you watch if you click on the link in the description box, um, Miranda Lambert's Bluebird. Um, there's a great lyric in that song that I'm really thinking of, where she goes, "Well, I'm a giver, and I'm still giving them hell," <laughs> and she goes. Um, but when things go wrong and, and, you know, I end up, you know, I end up wrong, um, I've made an, I've made an art out of forgiving well. Um, I think that I would really listen to that lyric. I'll try to find that lyric and put it in the, in the description box as well. But, you know, it, you'd be, be a giver, you know, <laughs> maybe you're given a little hell, but, um. But make an art out of forgiving well, you know, that's that's a good thing. And um, and keep a bluebird in your heart, you know, keep a bluebird in your heart. There's there's always so much to be thankful for, you know, um, and keep going, keep going. All those those little plotting steps take you somewhere. It, they really do. They really do. All right, guys. So last but not least, uh, we've got the Tarot of the Divine. So deck number three, what's our energy for the week? Ooh, nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and get your oracle card. Oh, nice. Well, that's sweet. Okay, this is interesting, guys. I'm getting a good vibe from this. All right, I'm just kind of get gonna get a beat on this real quick. All right, this is interesting. I've got a lot of duality energy here. What I think is interesting is how this sunflower has two faces, and then uh, this is the god uh, Janus, which is the the god of duplicity. Um, uh, but 
what you have is in the beginning of the week, you got the sun. Now, first off, that's the happiest card in the deck. And um, underneath it, you got the two of wands. And what I'm really getting here, guys, is that I think in the beginning of the week, some, some kind of opportunity is going to present itself where um, you're going to have a choice of two, you're going to have a choice between two things, but it's almost like, it's almost like both opportunities make you stupid excited, <laughs> right? Like it's, it's almost like, okay, you know, well, um, you know, you, uh, you get, you get the phone call that says, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna buy you a house and move you. Do you want to move to, um, I don't know, do you want to move to California or, um, or Florida, I don't know, uh, you know, to, you have a choice between two things that are very, both really, really good, <laughs> both really, really good. But um, the other thing that I get is that what's interesting about this card is that in one hand he has a wand and the other hand he has a key. And then it's interesting, one side he looks a little bit younger and the other side he has like a full beard. And the, the side of the key is like faced oriented towards the future. Anytime it's on the left side, it means the past. Anytime it means it's on the right side, it means the future. And what's interesting is that uh, Ra, the god Ra here, has a staff that's pointed towards the future. You know what I'm getting? It's in the beginning of the week. Um, you're gonna get the solution to something. You're gonna get you're gonna get an opportunity that will get will propel you into the future, and it's it's almost like it's the opportunity that you've been waiting for. Um, now, sometimes it could just be an idea. Um, that's one other thing is that maybe. Um, in the beginning of the week, you go and do something that makes you really happy, and then it gives you um, gives you an idea for something. Like it, it gives you, um, it's giving you a path to go forward, right? It's giving you a choice between two um, options. But what I really get here is that, like, um, you see how the 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 more mature choice is got the key facing towards the future and the happiness is f towards the future. Um, I really get the sense that you've just, there was, there was a situation in the past that you were kind of not certain about. And then sometime over the weekend or at the beginning of the week, it's almost like it, it either comes as an epiphany or some kind of happy occurrence gives you the solution and gives you the path that you want to take. It almost, um, and I know that sounds real woo-woo for a, um, a weekly energy, but um, I, I kind of see this combination as being like, um, you know, maybe you were kind of uh, doing the same thing for a long time and you, you never thought to do anything different. And then, you know, all of a sudden you, you go on some kind of nature trip and it, it, it gives you the inspiration to do something different, right? Like, I don't know, maybe you like to, uh, you know, make wooden furniture and, but you never thought that that could be a career for you. You have a day job and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you know, you go camping and you see this, this person who makes wooden furniture and you are like, aha, wow, that's so cool. You know, or you, you get exposed to something that makes you real happy and it, it's almost like giving you um, it's giving you a solution or if it's, it's giving you a path that you can take that you think will will lead you to you know a real a real happy future um, now one other way that I can kind of read this is that it's possible that you've had a choice like you kind of had a choice between two options and you went ahead and decided to take the option, um, you know, and it's it's just that moment of joy, you know, like, okay, you know, this is, but with it being a key, it really speaks of that being a solution or kind of like a, I'm getting almost like an aha moment, 
because the other thing that I get is that this is the Egyptian god Ra. This is the Egyptian god of Ra, and I think of Aha or Ra Ra. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. I'm, 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 I am. I'm hearing. I'm, I'm sensing this card phonically. Um, but yeah, either that or you know how sometimes when you feel kind of stuck uh, without a solution and then you finally, you figure out the solution and it's just like, again, it just, it's like, oh gosh, that's the, that's the, you know, that's, that's the remedy to all of my problems. And it, and it, it gives you a path forward, right? It gives you a path forward that you're definitely in that energy. And this is so great, guys. It's really happy. It's really happy energy. Now, by the middle of the week, uh, this is a little bit, this is a little bit of a turn. Um, the source, the root energy, you got the eight of swords. And I get the sense that you're kind of feeling a little bit sheepish about something. Um, and then the, the outward energy is the four of cups. Um, one thing I am kind of getting with this is that, um, it's quite possible that you might be starting something. This could be a creative endeavor, but you're all excited about something. And it's like, you're, you're so gung ho. You're like going straight for your path that you're, you're really focused on what you're doing, right? You're really focused on what you're doing. Um, where you see how this is the story of the nightingale and you see how like in the background you have a very simple cup, right? A very simple cup, but, and that is the nightingale. That's the real nightingale. But the emperor is trying to recreate the nightingale synthetically using gold and jewels. Um, What what I am kind of getting here, guys, is that I do think that maybe um, um, the Eight of Swords is about being trapped in your mind, and the one the the parallel between these two cards is that the Emperor is really trapped in his head. He he wants to create this this uh, he wants to create the Nightingale. He doesn't want to find the Nightingale in real life. He just it's like he's creating it in his imagination. Um, but the real thing is right outside his window. The real thing is right there. Um, I get, I kind of get the sense that I, I'm getting a strong sense that there's something about this situation where it's, it's, it's almost kind of telling you that you you shouldn't try to um, the path you choose is going to be the natural path. Like uh, it's it's almost kind of saying that um, I know this is this is a this is an interesting energy, guys. I know this is really kind of different um, for a weekly energy. Um, I, I just get the sense it's almost like you're gung ho about an idea or you feel like you feel like there's a way out. There's a choice and it's going to feel very liberating. Like it's going to be it's going to make you real happy that you have this option to take. But it's it's almost like in the middle of the week. Um, the, it's almost like the solution to your problems is right there, but it's the simple solution. But it's almost like you're overthinking it, right? You're overthinking it. The other thing I kind of get is that I get the sense like you feel like you you have a choice here, and you know the choice that will lead you lead you out. You know that will give you freedom, but it's it it requires that. I, I get the sense that it does require a little bit of surrender here. It, it requires a little bit of surrender. The other thing that I get is that I get the sense that you're really kind of overthinking this a little bit. You know what I'm hearing in my head, and I know this sounds crazy. Have you ever heard the expression that it's it's simple, it's not easy? 
that's what this solution is. Whatever you're excited about in the beginning of the week, the solution is simple, it's not easy. Um, I think what you have to do is, um, this is just really interesting energy, guys. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a little trouble getting a beat on it. Let me just kind of think for a minute. I think it's just really telling you to not overcomplicate things, right? Don't over, don't overcomplicate things. The other thing I kind of get is that um, the other thing I kind of get is I, I think it is cautioning you not to kind of throw a lot of money at something. If this is some kind of if this is some kind of endeavor, like if if you have some kind of new idea about something in the middle of the week, like something you really want to go after. Um, I wouldn't overthink it. I wouldn't overthink it. Um, I'm, I'm almost kind of getting the vibe like, you know, in, in order for you to have what you want, I'm going to come out and say, guys, the other thing that I'm kind of getting from this is that I get the sense that you have this opportunity and you're really excited about it, but you almost feel like you're not good enough. The other thing I kind of get with this is that um, I, I get I do kind of get the sense almost like you you feel like you have to dress up or you feel like you have to um, put up, throw a lot of energy towards this, especially towards the middle of the week. It's almost like you feel like you have to. I mean, I'm hearing dress the part. Like if this is some kind of job interview or something that you really want to do, um, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Um, the other thing is that if. Um, with with this you know with this girl kind of wearing the ears of a jackass you know um if you've ever seen pinocchio you know how when he gets turned into a donkey um what what that's kind of telling me is that you it it makes you look foolish if you try too hard right i think what it's telling you is just be yourself just be yourself. The other thing is that if you've made poor decisions in the past, like, you know, you see how he's kind of looking towards the past and then looking towards the future. Um, if, if you've made some, some bad decisions in the past and you feel like those decisions are going to come, kind of come back to haunt you, just, um, I really feel like the best thing to do is to just own up to it, right? Just go ahead and own up to it. You know how, um, you know, um, you know how they always say psychologically, um, psychologically, we always, we always put so much weight on our past failures. And, um, the other thing I get is that I think you, that you really think that people are watching you, right? Or people are judging you, but that's really just in your head. Um, but the, the thing that it's really telling you to do is that if you've had previous, you know, the other thing is that you might have tried a few times at, at, at an endeavor, you know, you might have had a few failures, um, and now you have a new idea, you know, a new choice, um, but it is telling you keep it simple. Again, the cup you're looking for is right behind you. You know, you don't need to recreate it with gold and rubies. It's right behind you. Um, the other thing that I get is that um, one other thing I do kind of get with this energy is that I do kind of, um, I do kind of sense that, you know how um, sometimes some kind of opportunity will present itself and you just, you're so over the moon about it, but then when you actually start to pursue it and, um, and you know, it, it turns out to be a bad deal. Um, then, then you later feel stupid about it, and it's like, oh God, I, I must have looked like such a fool. I was sitting there, you know. Um, I almost kind of look at it like those jobs that are like, oh yeah, you can make thirty thousand dollars in a year, and you're like, okay, and then you just up and quit your job, and you go running after it, and they're like, oh, but it's commission, you know. <laughs> and you're like, oh God, you know, you 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 feel stupid. You feel like people are judging you, um, and it's. Uh, but what I kind of get is that. Um, definitely kind of scrutinize you you might you might feel like something is the, the the ultimate solution but kind of look at it look at it closely the other thing is that you know just be yourself um 
If you feel like pursuing this opportunity or going after it is going to make you look foolish, if you've done things in the past, you know, like, again, maybe you, you went after a few of these before and, you know, um, just keep it simple. Keep it simple. The other thing is be yourself. And if, if, you've, if you've done anything that you think is foolish in the past, just kind of own up to it. Um, the other thing is that you are good enough. You are good enough. Uh, you don't have to dress up or, or I'm, I'm really getting a sense like you have that you feel like you have to um, live up to this opportunity by pretending like you have more or that you're I'm really kind of getting a wealth vibe here. Um, you know. I, I, I'm just kind of seeing with the simple cup, if, if you don't, you know, if you don't have like a silk suit to wear to the interview, that is okay. Just wear a button down, you know, don't, don't, don't do anything out of character, you know. Um, the other thing I get is that opportunity that you're looking for is not going to be flashy, right? It's not going to be flashy. If it's the real deal, it, it'll be simple, right? And um, I think by the middle of the week, you may want to, again, try not to overthink anything. I, I kind of get the vibe like it's it's almost like you've you've had, you know, brilliant solutions in the past and they haven't worked out for you. So you're starting to doubt yourself. I think your solution is out there, but just, you know, just take it easy, go slow, be yourself. You know, if you've made mistakes, own up to them and just let it go. The other thing is that it's always really good to kind of laugh at your mistakes. You know, don't take yourself too seriously, right? Don't take yourself too seriously. And I think that you'll be doing that kind of in the middle of the week. You're going to be, you're, you know, you're, I think you're going to be real um, kind of uh, um, tunnel visioned. That's, that's the other thing I get. You're going to be real tunnel visioned. Um, I also kind of get the sense that it's almost like it's from a sense of, of feeling not good enough. That it's that's what's striving, making you strive to try harder. Yeah, something in the middle of the week is just gonna make you feel like, you know, okay, I gotta try harder. I gotta try harder. But um, you know how they always say, you know, the the, the simple solution is the right one. You know, uh, don't don't overthink it, and and don't doubt yourself. You know. Um, the other thing I'm kind of getting is maybe get outside. Um, cause in both of these scenarios, she's inside of a cave, right? And here he's inside and what he's looking for is right outside the window. I would say that if you are starting to get in your head, I would go outside for a walk in the middle of the week. Get out of your cave. <laughs> get out of your cave. I also think if you're starting to get stuck in your head, like either feeling like you're not good enough or that, that everything that you do is a failure, go out for a walk. Immediately go out for a walk. Now, this is really great. By the end of the week, this is really nice. Um, we've, got, we've got the King of Swords and we've got the Page of Coins. So I really do kind of see this. And oh my gosh, this says simplicity. I, I was going through that whole spiel before I'd even looked at your card. Okay, that winner, winner. Um, I really get the sense that by the end of the week that you could be talking to someone who's like a mentor. Uh, the King of Swords is a real mentally smart person. Um, so maybe like if you work, if you work in tech or if you work in, um, if, if you work in some kind of field, um, I get the sense that you, you might be approaching a mentor who's just very mentally smart, you know, again, someone who, who, all, who has, a, the, the, uh, the King of Swords has all the answers. The other thing that's real neat about this card in particular is that this guy's a griffin. And um, the griffin has, in, in um, Celtic lore, and um, there is a, a Bamberg lion, um, <laughs> but he does kind of look like a griffin. Uh, the griffins hold the secrets of the universe, right? Like they really do. They have, they have, um, they have a lot of knowledge. They have a lot of mystical knowledge, and um, and they they have the solution. I am seeing a theme of solutions here. Um, it and it's almost like you go in search of it. 
and you can't find it, but it's eluding you because it's simple, not easy. But um, if you are in the Page of Coins energy, yes, this could be like it could be you approaching someone who is a uh, um, more more knowledgeable. Like it can be a boss like figure or someone who has the answer, like kind of like a mentor. Um, the other thing is with the six of coins, um, you see uh, what it is, is this lady, um, she brings, um, she is, she's an expert as well. Um, and she, she, um, it's almost like a conservatory of, of beetles. Um, and, and you see mountains in the background of all three of these cards, actually. Um, I kind of read this one of two ways. Um, if, if you were a child, you might be visiting your parent and I get the sense that your parents are real air sign kind of person. Like they're very, um, they're very smart. Um, this person, you know, maybe by the end of the week, you call your dad or call your uncle or, um, you know, you have some kind of conversation and, um, they really give you insight. Maybe they help you kind of with your problem, what, what you've been kind of facing for the week. Um, the other thing I get is if you are a parent, you might be spending time with a little one. Um, with the Six of Coins, I do think that um, it, it's almost like maybe you've been real busy with your work life or with other responsibilities. And by the end of the week, you're actually giving the time that your little one deserves, like you're spending time with them. I do also see that you might be you might bring them like a small gift. Um one other way that I kind of get this is that um, this is a lot of mental energy. Um, I think maybe by the end of the week, you you could be planning. Um, again, these two scenes look very similar. So what what you could be doing is you could be, um, you know, um, you could be. One other thing I kind of get with this is that you might be planning um, like courses on on how I'm, I'm almost getting like financial planning I know that sounds a little crazy but um I'm, I'm kind of seeing I'm seeing mountains in the background which kind of mean obstacles but then you're seeing a lot of spring flowers here too like it's it's like a valley so um I get the sense that one other way that I can kind of read this is that this could be again with this being kind of like a path maybe you're planning um you're you're starting to get some plans off the ground for maybe some um, uh, learning, like maybe courses, uh, could be college courses. Um, the other thing that I get is that um, what I see with this combination is that you have one person who's really experienced, so they have more, they have more to give, and then one person who's less experienced. And she's she's making it equal by bringing coins, right? So um, I do kind of get a little bit of a mentor vibe from this. I think by the end of the week, someone is going to maybe counsel or coach you. Maybe they give you some education that really helps with these challenges. Again, mountains mean challenges. They're, maybe they'll help give you the perspective, perspective that you need. And it's going to be, um, the other thing I kind of get with this is that um, they might get you in touch with other people that can help you on your path, right? Yeah, this almost feels like a collaborative environment. Maybe by the end of the week, you know, again, you know, you're, you're kind of, you, you've got this great new idea, but you feel kind of lost on your own or like, like you don't know enough, like you're not good enough. And then by the end of the week, it's almost like you get in touch with someone who's like a teacher or a mentor who can really bring you in, you know, maybe I, I'm always getting like joining some kind of community or joining some kind of club. Uh, please tell me if this resonates. This is really cool. Um, the other thing I get is that with pentacles and swords, this is very practical energy. I am almost getting like you were you were probably trying to do this on your own. You were kind of trying to play it by ear, um, but 
by the end of the week, you might actually, you know how when you get interested in a subject and then all of a sudden you find out that there's a group or some kind of club that you can join and you all help each other. You see the different beetles here, right? And then they're, they're bringing, she's bringing a new beetle in. <laughs> so I think you are learning something, but um, I, I think you are going to, you're going to have some help with it. Um, the only other way I can kind of see it is that maybe, um, you are really getting a game plan in place, uh, to spend some time, um, with a child, possibly a grandchild. And, um, and it's possible that you might, you might've been just kind of busy the, the earlier of the week you've been busy with other, you know, other things have been kind of in your way, <laughs> have been an obstacle. And by the end of the week, by the weekend, you do actually get, get a chance to give them the time, you know, that they, that they need. But I am almost getting like a group environment here, guys. Uh, maybe you're, you're starting some kind of new group and you're learning and you're joining the group. Um, yeah, that's interesting. It might have to do with money or finances. It might have to do with um, physical wares, like something physical. But here we go. Your two oracle cards, you got simplicity that says deep, deep, profound serenity is expanding in my life. And the other one says embracing. And it says I embrace and love all of my life, right? And again, I'm really drawn to the fact that there's two faces. Right? Two faces here and two faces there. So, um, yeah. I think you're starting off on a new path, guys. And I, I do think that it's just kind of asking you to keep it simple. You know, don't don't overcomplicate it. Maybe, maybe you do have to kind of wrap up some old things in your life. Um, you know, um, you... you I, I get a strong sense from this week. Um, it's probably one of those things like maybe um, I get kind of like the feeling like, you know how when folks, when you could start going to college and then you get one major and then you get halfway through the major and like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do this. And it makes you kind of feel like this. You're like, okay, people are going to start thinking that I'm flighty or that I don't know what I want to do. But it, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Um, just go ahead and simplify it. You know, if you changed your mind, you changed your mind, right? Uh, which is kind of like Janice, you know, being of two minds about something, you know? But if you change your mind, just own up to it. I changed my mind. Um, cut away anything that is not serving you. So again, you know, if you're not if you're not doing the old thing, get rid of get rid of it, and then start down the new path. Um, and then the other thing is embrace you know embrace those people who are going with you, you know, down the new path, right? Um, you know, go ahead and and start you know, bringing people into your life or, or learning what you want to learn. And, um, but what I am getting a strong sense that whatever path you're going down, it does, I, it's making you feel a little, it's a little unknown to you. It makes you feel a little novice. And I think mentally you really want to kind of control the, the way that it goes. But what it's telling you is don't try to, don't overthink it. Don't try to control it. Just, just go down the, the path that you're guided to take. And um, I do get the sense that by the end of the week that you'll know it's the right path because you'll start seeing mentors and other people who will start walking the path with you. Um, so I kind of see that. I, I embrace and love all of my life. It's kind of like, okay, you know. And, um, and, and also, just like with all three, car all three piles, you know, really embrace the little joys that you have in your life. You know, if you're going through a lot of changes or if you feel like there's been a lot of shifting energy, um, you know, be grateful for the little guys that are in your life or, you know, the, the little things that make you happy every day. All right, guys. So, wow. Oh my gosh. All three piles. This were, that was a good week. <laughs> That's a good week. But all right, I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a very good week. Um, if you are so inclined, um, I am going to be posting more deck review videos. I know I've been kind of slacking on that. Um, we will definitely be doing an, um, an angel and spiritual card deck, like an angel meditation and spirit kind of deck um, by, by the first week in April. 
And then um, I did get the, from Valentine's Day, I did get the the Love Story Oracle deck from Deja Drew. And it's, oh, it's such a pretty deck. Um, I do want to try to do a separate flip through. But if not, I am um, next Tuesday, if you'd like to join me, I am posting the last, and I can't believe it, the last How to Tarot. It's the last one. There's no more after that. Um, it is card 78, and um, it is, we're going to be talking about the King of Cups. So I hope you can join me then and that you have a good week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.